us, these are only just a sampling. A sampling of the things that Jesus did. John tells us that many other signs were done in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. And they all say that. And so we have this great mountain of evidence that Jesus was a miracle worker. In fact, in the Gospels, even his enemies, they don't deny that. Again, in John 11, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, what are we to do? For this man performs many signs. They never say he doesn't do that. And so again, we have all this testimony. Now, why do the Gospels record this? Why even bring this up? Again, today, some people like to, and they've done this in the past. They want to take the miracles away, right? Keep the teachings, keep the sayings. He's a good teacher, but let's get rid of the supernatural stuff. You, you can't do that. It doesn't work. Again, as we said yesterday, if you take away the miracles, he's a liar, he's a lunatic. I mean, what evidence do we have that he is who he claims to be? The miracles are entwined. They're part of his identity. They show that he indeed is the Messiah. And so like the prophetic evidence, uh, that's what we're talking about. These things speak to his identity. Again, John 20, uh, he says this. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written. These choice ones John picked out, again, the other Gospels have other ones, are written so that you may believe. Here's the evidence that Jesus is who he claims to be. He is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. They had an agenda, they did, to convince people that Jesus was the Christ. Now, why should we trust these accounts? They do have an agenda, and that bothers people, but, but, but what do we do? I mean, skeptics, critics, they question, can you believe these things? Again, we can't go do a scientific test to see if Jesus did what he said to do. We can't find any archaeology that will prove it. It may testify to it. And so what do we do? Well, we can examine the historicity of these claims. And again, this is something that people do uh, for the sayings of Jesus. Uh, there's so much written about this. Dates, places, people. The, the Gospels are littered with evidence that we can go investigate. And there are many books written about the historicity of the Gospels, their reliability. And so those are the kinds of things we can look at. And I believe that when you subject the Gospels to that kind of testing, what you're going to find, the same tools that historians use on any ancient documents, any ancient histories, you're going to find. We've got credible, historically accurate testimony about Jesus, and that includes the miracle claims. And so I want to talk about a few of those really quickly this morning. And again, I'm not an expert, so I invite you to go and read. But let's talk about a few of these. And the first one is multiple attestation. That's a criteria that historians use, and this is basically a tool that says the more, uh, something is more likely to happen if it's attested to in multiple accounts. And the more often it appears in independent traditions, the more likely it is that it happened. Now, I'm a very simple person. I can accept church tradition and history that Matthew wrote Matthew and Mark wrote Mark and Luke wrote Luke and John wrote John. Matthew was uh, an apostle. Mark was uh, with Peter. Luke was with Paul, so we have these eyewitnesses, and then we have John. And if that's true, then I've got four sources. And again, if you study this, some of the Gospels share stories, some of them have unique stories, and so we've got independent tradition, and they all say Jesus performed miracles. But there are some who think that, well, there's actually more than that, that Mark was written first, and Matthew and Luke copied from Mark, but they also had their own stuff, and then there's this mystery one called Q, and again, I'm not an expert, but Q is supposed to be the collection of sayings that Matthew uh, and Luke looked at. And then there's John. Now I've got five sources. And all those sources, again, are going to say the same thing. Jesus was a miracle worker. They may differ on the accounts, but they're going to say the same thing. And so that's five independent sources. And again, if you look at what Luke says, there's even more than that. Luke talked to lots of people had heard from lots of people. And if we leave the Gospels, we've got uh, Acts, we've got Paul's letters, we've got Hebrews, we've got Revelation, we've got lots of documented, documented evidence that talks about this. And so again, I've got plenty of independent sources that all say he was a miracle worker. And so that gives me cause to trust. And again, we could go into the whole discussion about what they were willing to do 
to give their lives because they believed in these things. But there's another criteria that I find interesting in this subject, the criteria of embarrassment. And again, if you've studied some of the resurrection things, you've seen this before. Uh, historians say that if someone, uh, uh, an encounter event is more likely to be true when the author includes embarrassing details. Why would they do that? It's going to make someone look bad. Why would they do that? Uh, the women being the, the first witnesses of the resurrection, that's kind of an example. But in Mark, and again, there's more going on here than we can discuss, but in Mark, there's this miracle where Jesus has to heal this blind man, or he, he decides to, and he spits. That's not what he usually does. And again, spits believed to have medicinal properties. And he touches the man, not once, but twice. And again, Jesus is trying to teach something here. I just want you to see. This is one of those kind of things. This is an embarrassing detail. Or what when the uh, Pharisees and the priests accuse him of casting out demons by the power of Satan. Why include that? That's an embarrassing detail. It's more likely to be true. So again, this is another test where these uh, things stand up. And then the last one, criteria of dissimilarity. This is a tool that says a saying or a motif, an action, is, is when it's not like uh, others of the same period, it's more likely to have happened. So if you go and look at miracle stories, miracle accounts in the Greco-Roman world, and compare them to Jesus, they're going to be different. They're going to use incantations. They're going to use talismans or whatever, these kinds of things. But that's not what Jesus does. Craig Keener, in his book on uh, miracles, he says, Pagan magicians typically sought to coerce deities or spirits by incantations. That's what they do. They have artifacts like that. But Jesus simply commanded as God's authoritative agent, whereas the gospel tradition provides many miracle stories, none involve incantations and so it's different different and that gives it credence it's probably true that's just a few we could go on and on with that but i hope and pray that you can see why should we believe these accounts because when you test them the way they test all kinds of ancient documents they're credible historically accurate testimony places people dates and i would say to you the miracle stories as well so i believe uh, jesus performed miracles because of the testimony of the gospels and that brings us to our last point, extra-biblical evidence. And again, I think this is very uh, powerful and persuasive. Uh, it is to me. And so uh, there's testimony outside the Bible. I mean, inside we have enemy attestation. His enemies claim they, they didn't deny that he did that. But there are other sources, non-Christian sources, Jewish and pagan, that mention Jesus was a miracle worker. And we're going to look at just a few of these uh, quickly here. Josephus. I think Brother Payne mentioned him Monday night. Again, a first century historian, a Pharisee, uh, went over to the Romans, seen as a traitor. He writes uh, several books, and in one of these, in Antiquities, he talks about Jesus. I'm just going to read you a snippet of this. It's in uh, a longer form in the book. Now, there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works. Now, again, if you're familiar with this citation, there is a Christian interpolation, in addition there, if it be lawful to call him a man. They don't believe that's uh, authentic with Josephus because Josephus was not a believer. He was not a Christian. And so they believe someone added that, but the rest of that citation, scholars agree this is authentic. And so what do we learn? Jesus was a wise man, a teacher, and he was known to do wonderful works. That was his reputation. He doesn't deny it. That was what people said about Jesus. Uh, the Talmud, and again, this was later. Uh, there are at least two editions of Babylonian, and the other one slips my mind now. But these are much later. But there's citations about Jesus there. Now, these are generally derogatory, polemical. They're trying to stop people from going to be Christians. And so you find these citations where they talk about Jesus. And let's just look at one of these. Uh, this is the Babylonian Talmud. On the eve of the Passover, Yeshu, that's Jesus, was hanged. For 40 days before the execution took place, a herald went forth and cried, He is going forth to be stoned because he has practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. Again, you can see the differences. This is further down the line about what happened. But sorcery. And there are other citations like this in the Talmud that talk about him being hung on the Sabbath, practicing sorcery, leading Israel astray. I'll come back to this in a minute, but, but do you see what's happening? They're not denying that he did miracles, wonder works. The question is how. Who's the power? And so we have these Jewish sources that talk about this. There's a pagan source, Celsus. Again, a critic uh, of Christianity, 
philosopher. We don't have his original works preserved, but they are found in Origen's writings, and Origen talks about some of the things that he said. He talks about Jesus. Uh, against self, since he says, and he next proceeds to bring a charge against the Savior himself, alleging that it was by means of sorcery that he was able to accomplish the wonders which he performed. Again, what's he tell us? Jesus was known to do these signs, miracles, and wonders, but he says it's by sorcery. There's another one he talks about him going down to Egypt to get his miraculous powers. And then if you continue to dig, there have been numerous artifacts found, uh, writings, incantations, amulets that have the name of Jesus on them. People used his name, pagans did, to invoke spells. Why? Again, that's the question I have to ask when I see these things. Why would hostile sources, not Christian sources, why would they say these kinds of things about Jesus? If he did not do these things, if he wasn't known for these things, then it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And so like enemy accounts in the, or enemy attestation in the Gospels, again, we have more uh, evidence about this. It wasn't a question of whether or not Jesus was doing signs, miracles, and wonders. The question is whose power? Whose power is it? And again, he was accused of doing this by the power of the devil, and again, Jesus claims otherwise. So I believe uh, that Jesus performed miracles because of the extra biblical evidence. And that brings us where we started. Peter's sermon. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst as you yourselves know. Why should anybody believe that? And as I said at the beginning, I think the biggest, greatest evidence is the resurrection. It just seals the deal. Everything else is not a problem. But besides that, why believe. And again, I think you can make a real good positive case for the miracles of Jesus because of the possibility and the reality of miracles because God exists. I believe the prophetic evidence, again, testifies to that. The testimony of the Gospels, even extra-biblical testimony, tells us that Jesus was a miracle worker. And so the question for you and me is, what will we do with this? What do we do? In Jesus' day, when he did these mighty works and signs and wonders. Some people were terrified. Some people were wondering and amazed. Some people came to faith. Some people opposed him and hated him and rejected him. What will we do with it? Up to you and me. We can continue to study and meditate on it and help it or hope that it will increase our faith, which is what it's done for me. And hopefully it will encourage us to go out and share it with other people that what we're believing is not some pie-in-the-sky crazy thing. We have evidence. God has given us testimony. Again, that's what John said. That's why it was given to us, so that we would have faith and believe and have life in his name. And so I appreciate your time this morning to think about why we should believe that Jesus performed miracles. Thank you.